Welcome to lecture 16. I believe that this will be our last formal lecture that's dealing specifically and pretty much exclusively with carnal maps. And in this lecture, we'll look at using carnal maps to find minimal products for functions with don't care conditions. We, in uh, the last uh, lecture or so, we've been using Carnot maps to find minimal sums uh, for functions with don't care conditions. Now we'll use them for minimal products. And I think that this will be uh, very straightforward for you. So let's look at um, one example here. Uh, let's suppose that you wanted to find all minimal products of uh, F of A, B, C, D is equal to the product of the max terms 0, 2, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, ended with the product of the don't care conditions uh, in cells 5 and 7. And I'm using exactly the same notation that your book does here uh, since this function is stated as a product of sums. They're writing the don't care conditions in the same way and also including them as a capital D rather than a lowercase d, but don't worry about that. It means the same kind of thing that we've done before. So uh, we want to uh, use the Carnot map method for this. And so as usual, we look at the, we start by looking at the number of independent variables, which is four and two to the fourth is 16. And therefore we will have a four by four Carnot map. Uh, the variables are A, B, C, and D. So we'll put A and B on the vertical axis and C and D on the horizontal axis. And we'll number these as usual. And now that we've done all this, we'll start with um, the max terms that are in this function. And so we have 0, we see that we have 0, 2, 10, 11, 12, 14, and 15. And since those are max terms, we will put zeros in those cells. So we have a 0 in cell 0, one, uh, a 0 in cell 2, and then this is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, here is 10, and here is 11, uh, 12 is here, and then 13 is here, 14, and 15. So those cells must get zeros and then in cells 5 and 7 we have don't care conditions and so what we're doing this will be very similar to what we had before with minimal sums now that we're finding minimal products we will treat cells 5 and 7 as squiggly zeros 
so um, again this is cell 4 and here's 5 so and again if you don't like the squiggly business just use another color that's fine but there is cell 5 and uh, cell 7 will be here and so we'll have those two squiggly zeros there now uh, the next uh, step once we have actually filled in the Carnot map is to identify all prime implicates we don't have any rectangular groupings of eight zero cells so we go next to rectangular groupings of four zero cells and we see one of those and it's right here and uh, take a moment if you're working along uh, take a moment to try to think of the name of this um, I hope you notice that a is constant and equal to 1 so we have a prime B is changing so it does not appear in the name and uh, C is constant and equal to 1 so we have or C prime uh, D is changing so it does not appear in the name so there is one uh, rectangular grouping of four one cells and I believe that that is the only one so now we look for rectangular groupings of two one cells that are not already contained in this prime implicate that we've already identified well one such grouping would be this zero with this one in the lower right corner and let's think about what the name of that would be A is changing so A does not appear in the name B is constant and equal to zero so we have B or and uh, C is constant equal to 1 D is constant equal to 0 so we have B or C prime or D now another rectangular grouping of two zero cells that is not uh, completely contained within anything we've already found is this we have this zero cell and this zero cell and the name of that is A or B or D because in those three cells excuse me in those two cells the three variables A, B and D are all zero but C is changing uh, another rectangular grouping of two zero cells is here this zero and this zero and the name of that will be a prime or B prime or uh, we notice that uh, C is changing but D is constant equal to zero so we'll have D and um, still another rectangular grouping of two zeros is here and the name of that will be B prime or C prime or D prime and then I see one more grouping 
uh, one more rectangular grouping of two zero cells and it's this one the two don't care conditions And the name of that will be A or B prime or D prime. And I believe that that concludes all of our uh, groupings of, or all of our rectangular groupings of two one cells. And there are no. Uh, groupings of one zero cell <coughs> that are not already contained in one of the prime implicates that we have already identified and therefore this is a uh, listing these three prime implicates that we have found are the prime implicates for or all the prime implicates for this problem Now we want to find essential prime implicates. And uh, the first step in doing this is to identify the essential zero cells. So let's go to the kernel map and find those. In the upper left hand corner, this zero cell is essential because it's contained within only one prime implicate. Moving to the right, the one here in the upper right hand corner is not essential because it's contained within two. If we go to the second row, this uh, zero cell here, uh, even though it is contained within only one prime implicate, it is not essential because it is a don't care condition. Uh, this one is not essential uh, because it's contained within two prime implicates and also because it's not essential. Excuse me, it is uh, a don't care condition. But this one is essential because it's contained within only one prime implicate. Uh, this one is contained within two prime implicates, so it's not essential. This one, likewise, is contained within two prime implicates, so it, implicates, so it is not essential. But this one is essential here. It is contained within only one prime implicate, and this one is contained within two so it's not essential. So we have three essential zero cells and uh, therefore we have three essential prime implicates. Uh, one here is the one that contains this zero in the upper left hand corner and as we go through our list we see that's A or B or D. And another one is the essential prime implicate that contains this cell. And again, as we go through our pictures, we see that that's this one, A prime or B prime or D. And then the final essential zero cell is here on the bottom row, this, um, this one right here. And uh, again, looking at our pictures, we can see that's the first prime implicate we identified, which is A prime or C prime. So now we go to finish this problem with minimal products. And we have uh, F of A B, C, D. As usual, we must always start with what is essential. And so we have A or B or D ended with A prime or B prime or D ended with A prime or C prime. Now we go up to our Carnot map and we shade in everything that we've already accounted for and then see if there's anything else that we need to account for. So the A or B or D, as we can see from our 
uh, little sketch here that is the two zeros in the upper left hand and upper right hand corner. So we've accounted for those, so we'll shade those in. A prime or B prime or D, as we can see from this picture, is the two zeros on the right and left edges in the third row. So we, we uh, also shade those in. And now finally A prime or C prime as we can see from the first sketch that is the grouping the rectangular grouping of four zeros down here in the lower right hand corner. So we shade those in. And now we ask ourselves if anything else needs to be accounted for, and the answer is no. Indeed, we do have the two don't care conditions sitting there, but they, uh, as I said, they don't care. We, we could make them zero, but there's no need to make them zero in this case. And so, therefore, we're done. Um, there's only one minimal product for this function. And it is that expression right there. And so we find out that the best option in this case is to treat our two don't care conditions in cells 5 and 7 as being, now this is important, since we did not use those as zero cells, that means we're taking those to be ones rather than zeros. So, uh, that concludes that problem. Now let's look at another example. Let's, uh, in this time, do something a little more challenging, maybe. We'll say find all minimal products. of and it's, it's not a great deal more challenging just a little bit but the uh, function we'll have this time is um, f of uh, wxyz equals the sum of the min terms 0, 3, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, plus the sum of don't care conditions and 1, 6, 11, and 14. Now I hope that you feel confident enough to try this on your own. It would definitely be a good exercise for you. So uh, I encourage you to stop the video now, give this an honest effort, and then come back and check your answer. Okay, so how do we do this problem? Well, uh, one way that we could do this would be to go immediately and um, write down the Carnot map uh, for this and, and then proceed from there. And if we did this the uh, all of the min terms would become solid ones and all of the don't care conditions would become squiggly ones but then when we convert uh, over to the form that would be more convenient for finding minimal products what we would need to do would be to uh, put zeros in all of the blank cells but also change all the squiggly ones to squiggly zeros because just as these don't care conditions can be ones well they can also be zeros so uh, one way would be to do this with the Carnot map 
Uh, let me just go ahead and, and outline that, but I'll show you what I think is actually a better method. Uh, so uh, if we if we wanted to tackle with this with the kernel map directly, uh, I would do the following. So you'll make your kernel map in WX over here Y Z zero 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 one 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 zero 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 one 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 zero now we want solid ones in cell zero and also in cell three and in cell five in cell seven in cell eight nine ten and in cell 12 and 13 those are all of the solid one cells and then in cells 1, 6, 11 and 14 we want the squiggly ones so uh, here's a squiggly one in cell 1 uh, squiggly, well, squ <laughs> squiggly uh, one in cell 6 would be that uh, squiggly one in um, cell 11 would be this and a squiggly one in cell 14 would be this okay so that's the kernel map for our function but then we realize that we're not looking for minimal sums here we're looking for minimal products and of course, when you're looking for minimal products, it's uh, easiest to work with the zero cells. So we would then convert this kernel map to this. And by the way, I'll call this... Uh, one method but I'm going to show you a second method that's a just slightly more efficient you can use whatever you want so again we have WX on the vertical axis YZ on the horizontal axis and now we want to put zeros and all of the blank cells now there's only two of them so we have a zero here and a zero here but we also need to remember that the squiggly ones are just potential ones but they are also potential zeros they could be either so we need to put now squiggly zeros wherever we have squiggly ones so we'll have one there and one down here and one there and one here so that would be one way of getting the kernel map that you want for this problem but a second method that's a little bit more efficient is the following we have our expression for f f of w x y z equals sum of the min terms 0 3 5 7 8 9 10 12 13 or with the sum of the don't care conditions in 1 6 11 and 14 and now we can just make the observation that that is the same as the product of the max terms and now we need to just look for terms that don't appear in either the listing of the min terms above or the listing of the don't care conditions well zero is a min term so it doesn't get listed one doesn't get listed but two doesn't appear in either list so we have two uh, 3 doesn't get listed because it's a min term. 
Uh, four is in neither list, so it would be listed. Five is a midterm. Six is a don't care condition. Seven, eight, nine, and ten are midterms. Eleven is a don't care condition. Twelve and thirteen are midterms. Fourteen is a don't care condition. So the only other max term we have is fifteen. And in fact, uh, I see that I had missed cell 15 above. And notice uh, I have a blank here in this kernel map, and I had missed it. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in now. Uh, and now uh, these these uh, don't care conditions just just still remain as don't care conditions uh, in this case, but we'll uh, now put them as a product of capital D 1, 6, 11, and 14. And if you uh, look at that, you'll notice that the kernel map of that is just this second picture. It has a um, 0 in cell 2, in cell 4, and in cell 15. And it has squiggly zeros in cells 1, and 6, and 11, and 14. So in other words, by using this technique, of, by using this second method, uh, we've been able to avoid drawing the kernel map twice. We only here draw it once. But either way, it doesn't matter to me which way you use, either way we come up with uh, this as the kernel map that we want to deal with in this problem. So uh, now that we've concluded that, we will proceed as usual. First we want prime implicates. There's no rectangular groupings. 16 zero cells or 8 zero cells or even 4 zero cells so we begin looking for rectangular groupings of two zero cells and um, uh, let's see what happens um, one rectangular grouping of two zero cells is here and uh, see if you can name that. We see that W and X are both constants, so both will appear in the name. We have W or X prime. And uh, C is changing, but D is, con not C, but Y. Y is changing, but Z is constant and equal to zero. So we have or Z. Another rectangular grouping of two zero cells is this one. And that is W or Y prime or Z. Uh, still another is this and that is X prime or Y prime or Z and another grouping is this which is W prime or X prime 
or Y prime and still one more grouping rectangular grouping of two zero cells is this one and that would be W prime or Y prime or Z prime and there are no more rectangular groupings of two zero cells and so now we look for uh, single uh, isolated zero cells and there is one that's not contained in any of the prime implicates we've already identified and it's this up here and so we include that and the name of that is W or X or Y or Z prime and those six prime implicates are all the prime implicates for this uh, function so now as usual we next want to identify essential prime implicates so we'll start on the top row and move from left to right now this is a don't care condition so it cannot be essential this is um, contained within only one prime implicate so this one is essential moving to the second row this is contained within only one prime implicate so it's essential this is a don't care condition it cannot be essential this zero moving now to the third row this zero is contained within two prime implicates so it's not essential this is a don't care condition so it cannot be essential and this is a don't care condition so it cannot be essential so uh, looking at this now we have two essential zero cells and therefore two essential prime implicates and we just have to uh, identify those are the prime implicates that have these uh, essential zero cells so the one the the prime implicate that has this essential zero cell in the upper right hand corner we see from our scratch, uh, sketch it is W or Y prime or Z W or Y prime or Z and then the prime implicate that has this essential uh, zero cell on the left edge is again looking at our sketches we see it's th this first one uh, W or X prime or Z W or X prime or Z so now that we have identified all of the essential prime implicates we're ready to finish this problem minimal products will have F of W X Y Z and as usual we have to start with what is essential so W or Y prime or Z W or X prime or Z and now uh, we will go up now and we need to shade in the prime implicates that we have uh, identified as being essential so that's the first one and the second one so we shade in this and this and we shade in uh, this and that takes care by shading in those terms we are t we're taking care of what we have put down here as part of our function 
And now we ask ourselves, is there anything left over that needs to be accounted for? Now we see that there's a zero, con uh, the, excuse me, a don't care condition up here in the first row. And since it's don't care, we don't have to account for that. Likewise, there's a don't care condition in the last row. We don't have to account for that. There's a don't care condition here in the last column in the third row. We don't have to account for that. But we do have to account for this zero here in cell 15. And there are two different ways we can do that. And they are both, uh, they involve the same amount of uh, difficulty or the same number of terms is probably a better way to put it. One way we can account for it is through in including this prime implicate, W prime or Y prime or Z, because it has cell 15 in it. And another way would be to have this prime implicate, W prime or X prime or Y. Either one of those will be fine because both of them in involve three literals, so neither one is preferable. So in this case, we are getting two prime implicates. So let's again, uh, let's uh, excuse me two minimal su minimal products so both of the minimal products as usual both of them have to have everything that's essential and then uh, for one of them we will put W prime or X prime or Y prime and, and uh, that's this prime implicate right here notice that if we if we included that that would take care of this zero cell on the other hand the other one W prime or Y prime or Z prime We'll also do it W prime or Y prime or Z prime and those would be the two minimal products for this case now uh, as long as we have this example up Let's be. Uh, let's go ahead and take advantage of it to uh, strengthen our understanding of one more issue, which was uh, covered in a recent uh, lecture and also on a recent test. These two minimal products, because of the presence of these don't care conditions, these two minimal products actually will not be the same for all possible combinations of the input variables. So looking up here, let's try to predict uh, what the difference will be. Well, remember, uh, looking at, the, uh, at our list of prime implicates here, Remember that in one case, in, in actually in the first case, our first minimal product contained W prime or X prime or Y prime, which is, I'll underline it here, this is that prime implicate, and the second minimal product contains W prime or Y prime or Z prime. So, we would predict that the minimal product, looking at this at this Carnot map, we would predict that the minimal product that uses this first prime implicate will be zero here. Remember, it uses this zero, but it does not use zero, this zero. So we would predict that it will have a value of zero in cell 14 but a value of since it did not use this zero a value of 1 in cell 11 
So we're going to predict um, zero in cell 14. Again, that's this cell right here, but a one in cell 11. And we will predict just the opposite for the other one because the other one contains this prime implicate. And so it would have a zero here in cell 11, but it doesn't have the zero in cell 14, so it'll be one there. So one in cell 14 and zero in cell 11. Well, let's check and see. 14, when we put that in binary, will be 1, 1, 1, 0. Uh, that's uh, X is 1, Y is 1, excuse me, W is 1, here's W, X, Y, Z. W is 1, X is 1, Y is 1, and Z is 0. And for 11 in binary, that is one zero one one. Now again, same thing down here. Fourteen is one 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 zero and one zero one one. So let's check and see if the functions really do have the predicted values. Well, uh, let's just we'll have to you know just go through this patiently and see what we get um, this this looking at the first function we have uh, since w is equal to one uh, we're going to evaluate this top line first so w is equal to one and that means the first term in the product will be one likewise the second term in the product will be one uh, what about the last term well W, X, and Y are all 1, so W prime, X prime, and Y prime are all 0, and 0 ordered with 0 ordered with 0 is indeed uh, 0, and 0 ended with anything is 0, so sure enough, we do get 0 for the value of the function in this situation, when W is 1, X is 1, Y is 1, and Z is 0. That is indeed, the function is equal to 0 in that case, and, and the easiest way to see that is just by looking at that last term. Because when w, x, and y are all 1, then w prime, x prime, and y prime are all 0, and 0 ended with anything is 0. So we agree with this prediction. Now, uh, let's see if it has a value of 1 in cell 11. Well, in, uh, since w is equal to 1, we know that 1 ordered with anything is 1, so definitely the first term is 1, definitely the second term is 1, but what about this last term? Well, since x is equal to 0, x prime will be equal to 1. 1 ordered with anything is 1, so we get a 1 here, a 1 here, and a 1 here, so sure enough, in cell 11, we do indeed get 1. Now let's verify that when we look at the second minimal product, we get different values. So for this second minimal product, when w, x, and y are 1, when we're looking here at cell 14, so we will have w, x, and y are 1, but z is 0. Well, um, again, since w is 1, the first term is 1, and the second term is 1, but let's look at this last term. Well, we can reason as follows. Since z is equal to 0, z prime is equal to 1, and as soon as we see that the z prime term is 1, we don't have to even worry about w and y because 1 ordered with anything is 1, so we get 1 and 1 and 1, and sure enough, we do get 1 in this case in cell 14. And now what about uh, here in cell 11? Well, since we have a 1 for w, the first term and the second term are equal to 1, but what about this last term? Well, w prime, since w is 1, w prime becomes 0, 
uh, remember this second variable is x, y is 1, so y prime becomes 0, z is 1, so z prime becomes 0, so we have 0, ordered with 0, ordered with 0, which is 0, and 0 ended with 1, ended with 1 is 0, so sure enough, we do get a 0 in cell 11. So all of our predictions there were correct, and we see that these two minimal products do differ in their values in cells 14 and 11. But that's okay, because 14 and 11, as we see right here in our original statement of the problem, 14 and 11 are don't care conditions, so we don't care that they don't agree there. But if you checked uh, in all the uh, other, if you checked here in cells 2, 4, and 15, or if you checked in cells 0, 3, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, 10, 12, 13, they would agree in all of those. And furthermore, uh, they would actually agree in cell 1 as well because both of them uh, left out this term. And so they would agree in cell 1. And furthermore, in cell 6, they would agree because both of them included this term. So, um, cells 11 and 14 would be the only cells that these two minimal products would differ in but again that's okay so uh, that is our uh, or those are our two examples of finding minimal products for functions having don't care conditions and uh, so now let's consider some uh, test questions for this lecture So now for the uh, test questions for this lecture. And all of the test questions were interested in uh, the function f of a, b, c, d, which is equal to the product of the max terms 0, 2, 6, 7, 9, 12, 13, with uh, don't care conditions in cells 1, 3, and 5. And uh, question 16.1 asks you to list all of the prime implicates of this function. 16.2 asks you to list all of the essential prime implicates. And then finally, 16.3 asks you to list all of the minimal products. And that concludes the uh, questions. And it also concludes then our uh, lecture 16. So uh, good luck.